Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer! What you preach, I guess, about it talking trash. Now they want to pose on me like, uh-uh, not so fast. Hello everybody, it is Michael here, back with another video, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the Golden State Warriors and their very, very interesting 2021 NBA offseason. Before I get into the video, I would like to remind you guys, please like the video. I think this is going to be one of my best I've ever made. I've put a lot of effort into this, and I'm really, really excited to talk about the Warriors. Also, subscribe to the channel. Only about 23% of the viewers in the past month are subscribed so let's definitely run those numbers up and let's finally get into the video for the past couple days i have not been able to get the warriors off of my mind i am so fascinated by all the moves they made in this offseason and i think they have such an interesting plan going forward for their franchise so in this video i want to discuss at least what i perceive their plan to be i want to discuss the positives the negatives and then just my overall thoughts on what this team is doing and just my overall grade for their off season so let's get into the positives first the Warriors this offseason with the seventh overall pick took Jonathan Kaminga, very talented forward out of the G League Ignite. He has so much potential with one of the best athletic profiles that this class has to offer. He's incredibly quick, very strong, has a ton of bounce, and just overall is oozing with potential while it may take some time he is absolutely a guy who i believe in the warrior system could develop to be a very very good player he was the sixth overall player on my big board and in a very talented draft class that is of the utmost praise at the 14th pick they took one of my favorite guys out of this class and the guy just behind jonathan kaminga for me at seven on my big board in moses moody moses moody is a three and D guy who while some people have projected him to be more of a project I do believe he can make a pretty immediate impact just due to how talented of a shooter he is and how good I think he'll be on the defensive side of the ball with his length the real questions for him just come with him being a shot creator and how much more can he be outside of just a 3 and D guy but in the warrior system alongside the players that they have I do think that he can immediately play a role do it very well well and then behind the scenes develop the areas of his game that are maybe lacking at this point so I think that was a fantastic pick especially getting him at 14 when I have him at 7 on my big board 10 out of 10 pick for the Warriors. They also picked up some veterans who I like quite a lot. Otto Porter Jr. is someone who's had a rough couple past seasons due to him constantly being injured. But I do like this as a very low risk and high reward move for them. Because if he doesn't end up panning out, it's a very cheap contract. And at the worst, he can just be a veteran presence for guys like Moody and Kaminga on the wing. But at its best, he can go back to being the 3 and D guy he used to be before all of his injuries. And even through all these different injuries he's dealt with in the past couple of years, he's still been a very effective three-point shooter when he's actually been on the court. He's been a guy who shot around 44% on catch and shoot threes in these past couple of seasons. And in the Warriors system where he's going to be getting a ton of great looks off the ball generated by guys like Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson, I think he's going to be really impactful as long as he can stay healthy and as long as his defense hasn't taken a dramatic drop in these past couple of years. They also got Nemanja Bielica, who's a guy I like as a veteran presence. He's someone who's a very good shooter and while he's probably going to be playing pretty limited minutes, the impact he can have as a shooter is going to be very valuable because it's ve it's gone very underrated these past couple of seasons that outside of Steph for the past two years and then outside of Steph, Clay, and KD obviously before, the shooting on this roster hasn't been that great. It was just the shooting of the top guys was so fantastic that it didn't really get noticed that much. 
but now they finally added some reliable shooting veterans which is something i feel like they've been missing for years now and i'm really really excited to see them do it and then the signing i like the most is andre Godala. because while i'm actually not that confident that andre Godala will make a huge impact on the court just due to him aging he didn't look super great with the miami heat i think his impact off the court will be fantastic as he's an incredible basketball mind someone who's been around the league for a while who's been in a lot of different situations a lot of different roles and with him being a wing who's more defensive minded i think he can really help in the progression of a guy like jonathan kaminga who has a lot of work to do on the defensive side of the ball but has immense upside and then he can help someone like moses moody really learn how to play with a guy like steph curry as steph and iggy always had a really good connection and moody can develop that within time so i love that addition even if he's more of like an on-court coach than an actually really good player i think that addition will have a fantastic impact not only in the short short term with the development of those guys this year but throughout their entire career i think iggy can be key in that and looking at some other positives of the direction they've decided to go is the fact that as long as Clay Thompson comes back, let's say even 85, 80% of the guy he used to be, the Warriors should have enough top tier talent to still be a very competitive team in a tough Western Conference. Stephen Curry, I think, is the number two player in, on the planet. I would only put Giannis ahead of him. Some people would put KD, put guys like uh, LeBron, obviously. Kawhi ahead of him but I think Steph Curry is the most offensively impactful player we have in the league and I don't even think it's that close while Kevin Durant is obviously a fantastic scorer and probably strictly just the best scorer in the league Stephen Curry helps his teammates out so much with his gravity and with his playmaking ability while him also being one of the best scorers that this league has ever seen draymond green had a revitalization last season we saw him with a team that was clearly trying to be competitive be back to the guy who he used to be at least a couple of seasons ago he's not going to be 2016 draymond where he was shooting the three ball really well ever again but he was that like 2018 ish draymond where he was incredible on the defensive side of the ball, finishing top three in Defensive Player of the Year. And he was a guy who was always around the top of the league in assists as well. It went pretty underrated that he was uh, top five in assists last year. And as a big man, a guy who had to play center for a long portion of the season, that is incredibly imp impressive. And even if Clay takes a bit of a step back on the defensive side of the ball, which I expect him to, and even if he doesn't start the season right, away which it seems like all reports are leading towards that his impact as a shooter and his gravity will be so important to this team that at the bare minimum he's going to be a top 40 ish player again i'm a little bit worried about him uh, coming back but he was so good before that i think as long as it's not an incredible amount of regression he could still be very very good for them i don't even know if he'll be an all-star caliber player but even if he's in the range of Draymond that's two guys who are very very good and then you obviously have one of the best players on the planet in Stephen Curry so that quote-unquote big three definitely will help you be a team that is around the top of the Western Conference fighting with teams like the Clippers where Kawhi will be injured for a lot of this season the Nuggets uh, Jamal Murray will be injured for a lot of this season those are some teams that could really be affected by injuries and the Warriors could pounce and uh, leap over teams like that. I don't think they'll be able to get past a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, but they definitely could be competitive. And then I could easily see them beating teams like the Jazz, like the Dallas Mavericks. I think they could make a tough series against uh, the Phoenix Suns. I'm not necessarily saying those go super far. I don't even know if they'll make the Western Conference Finals, but they'll absolutely be competitive. And then your hope is that throughout the season, guys like 
Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and James Wiseman, their number two overall pick last year, are developing, getting better, and then preparing to take over the reins. Because if that does happen, then you'll be set up perfectly to not only be competitive right now, but when your stars start to decline, those guys can easily come in and take the reins. We can kind of see what happened with like the Spurs before obviously all the weird Kawhi stuff happened. We saw uh, the Spurs seamlessly transfer to a new era when their older guys started to uh, decline, when Tim Duncan wasn't the guy he used to be. We saw Kawhi step up and even win a finals MVP at a very young age. And while obviously it's far from a guarantee that something like that will happen, it could absolutely happen in a warrior system that has been very good at developing players throughout the years. So the best case scenario is that you stay very competitive right now and that with hopefully the eventual growth of these young players, you can maybe even still have a championship window with uh, your older guys still being very impactful and then have long lasting success when your older guys start to decline and your younger guys start to ascend. So that is the positives of this plan for the Golden State Warriors. Now let's go on to the negatives. The biggest negative is that you could be wasting a championship window with one of the 15 greatest players we've ever seen touch the planet in Stephen Curry. I'm very, very worried that if guys like Jonathan Kuminga and if guys like James Wiseman don't improve significantly in the next couple of years, this team could just be middling in the Western Conference. I still think they're going to be competitive no matter what, and I think they're going to be better than last uh, year's team was, but I think they could be a similar but just slightly improved version of last year's team, where they're going to be competitive in a lot of games, they're always going to have a chance, but they're going to be streaky, they're going to be up and down, because they're going to be relying on players who are streaky and are up and down. We saw the Warriors last season never really be able to get a rhythm. It was at, it was a thing that I saw, uh, that they had never won three games in a row, and I think they may have only lost three games in a row once last season they were consistently inconsistent and I think that could be a similar problem in these next couple of years because while Jonathan Kaminga was the number six player in the draft for me when I when you look at my scouting report of him which I have up on YouTube if you want to watch it and if you look at a bunch of other scouting reports as well you'll see very similar things in my scouting report almost everything was talking about things that he could potentially do very few things we're talking about what he was going to be able to make an immediate impact with and that's very concerning like defensively his upside is crazy he has such great athletic tools but he also falls asleep frequently he gets caught ball watching and a lot of the times he just didn't hang even in the g league so now with the competition obviously stepping up another level he could have some very bad struggles early on shot selection was an issue as well he would take a lot of really tough contested mid-range shots he wasn't a great outside shooter his free throw percentage wasn't that good either so that doesn't really give me hope and his outside shot being an immediate thing either jonathan kaminga is clear clearly a project and that's fine there's a lot of projects in this class that i liked but when we look at a lot of these other projects it's the teams that they went to that makes the main difference kai jones was a guy who i loved as a project and i think his potential is insane he went to a hornets team where he's going to have to play a simplified role he's not going to have much pressure and they're going to be a team that's fun probably competing for a lower seeded playoff team but the warriors want to compete for a championship so they're obviously going to be expecting a lot more out of a guy like jonathan kaminga than a than the hornets are out of Kai Jones, someone like Usman Garuba, he went to the Rockets. The Rockets are a team that's going to be pretty bad for these next couple of years, and he's just going to have all the room in the world to develop into whatever player he's going to be. Josh Giddy, who got drafted very high, I'm not super high on him, 
But with a team like OKC, you could definitely see him develop a lot because he is really naturally talented, but he has a lot of things to work on. And he's going to have all the time in the world to do that because the expectations for a team like that are so low. It's just such a unique situation with a guy like Jonathan Kaminga because he needs so much work. But my real question is, is he going to have the time to develop into the player that he could potentially be? I don't know about that. What I want to do right now is go a little bit more in depth on my thoughts on Jonathan Kaminga, do a bit of a film study, and this is going to be to illustrate exactly what my point is about the problems with the Golden State Warriors plans and them having their cake and eating it too and why that could be a big, big issue. We're going to look at this uh, Jonathan Kaminga film session. Shout out to Hardwood Hoops. Uh, they make really good draft content. Uh, I did a lot of my scouting over there they like show shot attempts they show defensive clips assists turnovers really really good to get just some uh, quick film on basically any prospect that got drafted in the 2021 class so definitely check out their channel I'll have them linked in the description so we're gonna look at some of the good and some of the bad with Jonathan Kaminga and then just give some more of my overall thoughts on him so yeah let's get into that right here pull up jumper off tough shot it's what he does quite a lot he takes a lot of really really challenging shots uh and that's a big big issue with him three right there this is something that he really struggles with form wise not too bad but it's just never been able to land for him uh in this point in his career so far another really tough shot right there is a bit of a later shot clock look but you would have liked him to maybe just not do the pump fakes and just pass it away instead of taking that tough shot another three right Right there catch and shoot he's got to be able to hit those in this warrior system if he's going to be impactful for them this one uh nice off the dribble uh, gets a pretty decent look but just can't get it to fall he's really struggling in this game so far and this is what we'll see just as a whole very inconsistent he's gonna have his game where a lot of these shots are hitting but another pretty good look right there people are just sagging off of him as he's almost a non-threat from three and while the spacing will be helped by curry and clay obviously he's got to be able to hit those catch and shoots misses uh fade away right there again not a terrible look but just really really bad miss wide open three not a good contest finally hits one right there he's gonna need to be able to do that on a much more consistent basis than he is right now for him to be really truly impactful with the warriors team that's the type of stuff that he's going to make the biggest impact in in transition and getting downhill he is an awesome athlete so he's really going to be able to do that effectively wide open man in the corner right there doesn't see him at all that's a big issue tunnel vision wasn't an awful look but you'd like to see him get a better one uh pick and pop right there really really good movement from him and he just has to hit that shot uh, I love him running the pick and pop. I think that's something he can be effective in, but he's got to actually hit it. Good job of getting in position to get the offensive rebound, but just get swatted right there. Uh, it, again, it's nice for him to get the extra possession. You would just like to see him try and finish off the play. Wide open, three off the catch and shoot. Misses that one. Another uh, just miss where he has to be making those type of shots. This is where we see him at his best, though, in transition where he can show off that athleticism. Really, really good at running the floor. He's got to be a threat uh, because it's really going to hurt all of his teammates. It's going to hurt a guy like Andrew Wiggins if his driving lanes are clogged up when Jonathan Kaminga's defender is just completely ignoring him. Uh, wide open three right there misses that one one of two on the game so far so that's not too bad uh, and I did uh, like to see him get that space right there good job staying patient waiting for a shot can't hit it though he's got to be able to hit those type of shots those are wide open looks and that was a good pass nothing wrong uh, with anything he just couldn't hit the shot but good job by him in transition I think that could really be his best ability is to just be in transition uh, but we're gonna get into some of the other stuff I think we've seen enough of his offensive game hits a three right there um, but we're gonna get 
uh, into some defensive clips because this is this is my thing. Uh, my big thing about Jonathan Gaminga, he's hyped up as a great defender, and while he has great defensive moments, it's definitely not fully there quite yet. We'll see some of these highlights right here where he's doing good things. He can definitely be really impactful around the rim uh, with his length and his vertical leaping ability as long as he's just reading the game well like great job right there to read the cut from tyrell terry and then get the block but that just doesn't happen frequently enough and like right here we're seeing the good stuff we're seeing him move his feet quickly uh sh sh completely shut down uh, a drive and then swat it good job to come out of nowhere for help defense come from behind get a good block We'll see him on uh, Ignaz Bosdakis. Great defense and then swats it. That was absolutely fantastic showing of his athleticism and length. Uh, and now in the post, he's a pretty effective post defender. Gets the uh, deflection right there. Love to see that. We'll see him. Uh, and he's off the ball. Great help defense. Really, really good positioning by him right there. He does get caught on the fake, but great help defense from his teammate. And then he does a good job of rotating, getting in the spot, and then uh, getting the swat right there. So not a perfect possession, but pretty solid. Another good example. He does uh, fall for a fake. So that wasn't a perfect defensive possession by him, but he did get the SWAT, even if it eventually led to a bucket. And then that's one of the big highlights we saw. First game he played in the G League. Absolutely fantastic block. Beautiful stuff by him. Uh, we see him staying on his man. Really, really good job. Moving his feet. That guy doesn't look like a super great shooter. He wasn't super confident in that shot. And he forced him into a pretty tough one. Didn't do a great job moving around the screen right there. He just has to commit harder to the three-point shot. And especially when shooters are going to get better. That's a decent contest, but definitely could have been better. Especially with all his length and athleticism. You want to make that a lot more of a tough shot. Uh, we see him right here in a little handoff action. Again, just not stepping up enough. That is a bit of an issue with him. He sometimes can just lack commitment, especially when we see actions like this, when we see uh, pick and fades and we see handoff plays. He sometimes uh, can just fall asleep, and he did fall asleep right there. He was lucky his man didn't take the shot initially, um, but he did do a decent enough job of getting over to his man, so I can respect that. Uh, and we see him off the ball right now. Jared Jack is clearly pointing that that's his man, and he just doesn't really commit to him. So that was definitely not a good defensive possession right there because his teammate's committing. It's just taking too long. Gets caught ball watching right there. Wide open three is missed. But again, it's not the results that matter. It's the looks that these guys are getting that matters. He uh, really gets just thrown off with his momentum completely. He was going back. Guy stopped on a dime. Good move by uh, the offensive player right there. But he also has got to do a better job of committing. Uh, pretty good job fighting through the screen right there. Got a solid contest. So I like to see that for sure. Uh, his man was clearly communicating for him to switch back. Didn't do it quick enough. Wide open three. See, these are some of the issues and uh, the things that are worrying for me about Jonathan Kaminga. So we'll wrap up this film study. We'll just have it still going on in the background. But many of his issues just come from the mental side of the ball. Uh, you've seen, and this hasn't even been the worst of it. There's just a lot of defensive lapses in here. He also has a lot of bad turnovers as well that comes from mental. He does not uh, look at his man at all. Just gets lost off the ball. He's got to do a better job of switching quicker. And especially when his guys are clearly communicating it, that's really worrying that he's just not reacting quick enough. And I think this is why we saw Jared Jack was on a podcast. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but he was talking super highly of Jalen Green. Like he was constantly praising him. And then he talks about Jonathan Kaminga, and it's kind of just the classic, oh, he's athletic, he's got a lot of potential, you know, hardworking kid. Just kind of the basic stuff you would expect for him to say. Definitely not going nearly as hard for him as he did for Jalen Green. And we can see that watching it. He is really struggling communicating with a guy like Jared Jack. Jared Jack's obviously not a super great player. He's in the G League for a reason, but that's an NBA veteran that he really could have learned from. And we just didn't really see him uh, take full advantage of that. So that does worry me about Jonathan Kaminga. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little film breakdown. Obviously, watch Jonathan Kaminga on your own. You can watch some of the Summer League stuff as well and really formulate your own opinion on him. 
but I was just wanted to point out some of the things he's good at, some of the things he's bad at, and why this is a really perfect example of the situation that the warrior, Warriors are in. I feel like he perfectly represents the issues with this plan. A lot of potential, but it's going to take time. But do they have that time? That's the real question, and you, you guys will just have to answer that. Uh, so yeah, that's film study. I think we might be doing this more. I want to kind of incorporate film more into my videos. Obviously, don't want to get copyrighted. But we'll see how this goes, see how this goes over. Definitely leave your feedback, and we'll get back to the video. And it's a very similar thing with James Wiseman for me as well. I was a big component of them not selecting James Wiseman. It's what they ended up doing, and it's what almost every mock draft had them doing. But I was a big fan of them going after Anyeka Okongwu, who is on the Atlanta Hawks. And while he didn't have a great start to his career dealing with a lot of injuries, I will still stand on that, that I think James Wiseman was the wrong pick. And it's again, with Jonathan Kaminga, it's not against James Wiseman as a player necessarily, it's just the situation doesn't really fit either of them. James Wiseman isn't given the opportunity to be the potential unicorn that he could be, and the Warriors couldn't get the full use out of James Wiseman because he wasn't ready to make an immediate impact. They went on a pretty significant streak of being very good the second James Wiseman got injured, and while I think some of that is just getting the chemistry together, James Wiseman being injured played a part in that. And again, that's not against James Wiseman as a person or a player, but it's just the situation at hand. He has a lot of development to do up here. He really needs work defensive IQ wise. And he could have used going to a team that was going to have low expectations. So he could have just developed into whatever player he was going to be. And then we look at someone like Anyeka Kongwu. Again, he got limited opportunity. But we saw he was an impactful player in the playoffs for the Hawks who were fighting to potentially make an NBA final finals run he had great minutes guarding Giannis he did a very very good job as good of a job as you could expect anyone and especially a rookie to do he's someone who I think has a really high basketball IQ and just fits the warrior system a lot better James Wiseman is a guy who has the potential to be like what Chris Stapps maybe we wanted him to be obviously very different players but in that unicorn mold of these guys are such athletic big men who at the best can shoot the ball from outside, take guys off the dribble, guard multiple positions. But in the current moment, James Wiseman was being used as a guy in the pick and roll, and he had a pretty limited role, which didn't fit him. And a lot of the things they were asking him to do, he's simply not good at. The Warriors are a team that is known for their ball movement. They're known for having guys who need to make quick decisions on a regular basis. And that's one of James Wiseman's biggest weaknesses is as a playmaker and even though I love Moses Moody and I think he's less of a project than a lot of people are saying Moses Moody still does have some development to do he looked really lost in the tournament I was rooting heavily for Arkansas because I loved Moses Moody as a player and I was honestly really disappointed with him because I thought he was gonna do a lot better in a situation like that but we just saw him at many times freeze and not look like the guy he did throughout most of the season he can be in consistent as a shooter sometimes and he does have a lot of work to do outside of just his three and d ability so he's another guy while i think he's going to make an impact it may not necessarily be as big of an impact as you would want and then uh, they do have a lot of other good players on this roster but I don't think they have good enough talent to surround this big three with uh, talent that would lead to a championship. Like, I like what Andrew Wiggins does. He was great defensively last year and looked much better in a warrior system where he had a clear and defined role. But he's not good enough to be the fourth guy on a championship team that doesn't have a ton of depth and that has a a lot of guys who need a ton of work they're in this really really weird limbo spot and unless they have the perfect situation like the spurs had happened in 2014 we could see this team be very similar to what happened with the boston celtics and this is my biggest worry i i'm a celtics fan i watched the 2018 season and i saw exactly what the struggle can be with having top tier talent that's ready to win right now and youth 
that still needs development. And the scarier thing for me is Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were way farther along in their development than any of the young players on this Warriors roster. But we saw Jason Tatum trying to expand his game and it clashed with a guy like Kyrie Irving who's already an established player in this league. We saw Jalen Brown have one of his worst seasons as a pro, probably his second worst just ahead of his rookie season as he was put in a really weird role that didn't allow him to be who he could be. And I think we could see that happen with a lot of these other guys on the Golden State Warriors because I honestly don't see the trade being there for them. Like, yeah, you could explore a Ben Simmons trade, but the Sixers are asking a lot of that. And I don't like that trade anyways, because Ben Simmons and Draymond Green are nearly the same player. Uh, I think Draymond's on-court leadership is way better, and obviously Ben Simmons is different to him. He's more of a ball handler than Draymond is. He's more of a legitimate point guard than Draymond is, but I think that's a big clash right there. Bradley Beal seems so happy in Washington, and I think he's just going to stick it out at least for the next season with them, because I think they can actually be a pretty competitive and fun team. They got a lot of depth over there. They got a guy in Rui Hachimura who I think could be a most improved player candidate and i just don't see him asking out at least for now the only situation i see him going out now is in free agency potentially to, to a team like the celtics who are going to have a lot of cap space and uh, he's really good friends with jason tatum that's honestly like the only situation i see bradley beal leaving for now because he just seems like he loves washington so much i expect the timberwolves to take a leap next year with hopefully a healthy team finally and hopefully a big second year jump from a guy like Anthony Edwards so I don't see Carl Anthony Towns being a trade option and I see the Warriors potentially being in a situation where they're good but not good enough and when these guys are finally ready to make a huge impact their players are just going to be a little bit too old and maybe we do see a big regression from clay thompson i think that's very realistic we all love clay thompson i'm a huge clay thompson fan and obviously i don't want to see that happen but coming off two legitimately gruesome leg injuries like that is terrifying for me especially when one of his biggest uh, traits was being one of the best wing defenders in the league his shooting is not going to leave but i'm worried about his off-ball movement not being able to be the same as a whole i feel like the warriors might be in a position where they're improved but they're just not improved enough and if that trade doesn't come along they could never reach the heights of a championship team again and that would really suck for them because steph curry is still so good right now and he's absolutely good enough to be on a championship team but I just don't know if they're going to be able to build all the pieces around him to do so.